Hi, I'm George, and we'll be doing this torn paper effect here inside of Photoshop Elements. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. Hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos. And to really learn how to use Photoshop Elements, check out my complete course, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, let's start this off with a brand new file. I'm just going to close this one down. There we go. Get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. Now all the images that I'll be using here are available on my website. There's a link for that in the description. And we'll start off with the first one, which is the picture right here. Let's bring this up as our base image. And let's now open up the torn paper image. And I have that one right there. Now with this image, we need to rotate this around to the right. Go up to image, come down to rotate, and then 90 degrees right. There it is. Now I have this as a floating window as you can see. To get floating windows, go up here to edit, come down to preferences and the general tab right there. And right here where it says allow floating documents in expert mode, make sure that, that is checked. Okay, and choose all right. Now with the floating window, we can just grab this layer and drag it onto our working project just like that. Don't worry about being able to see through it, that doesn't matter. All we care about is the edge. If I go to the left over here, it doesn't go clear to the right, so I'm just going to grab this control handle right here and pull it straight to the right until it goes clear across the page. There we are, and then hit that green check mark. Now pull it down so it's just a little bit below the top of our hair up there, kind of cutting into the hair a little bit. And then if you tap the control T keyboard shortcut, you can come in here and come just outside of the corner up here and pull it to the right just a little bit. It just gives it a little bit of a slant like that, and then hit that green check mark. Okay. Now we want to select the area up here. This is the open area here, the transparent area. So grab the magic wand, come down here and uncheck sample all layers if it happens to be checked. Everything else can be checked. And then click up here somewhere and that just selects that top area where we don't have this. And notice this little piece right here. We picked up that as well. I want to include that in the selection. So I'll just go up here to the lasso tool. Make sure you're on the add right there in the options. And let's do a lasso around that. That just brings that into the whole picture. Okay. Now, make a new layer. There it is. And I want to fill this area with white. So make sure that white is your foreground color. If you're at the defaults like that, just hit this double arrow here. Put white in the foreground. Grab your paint bucket and then click in there to fill that with white. All right, let's go ahead now and deselect that. That's good. Let's come back down to this paper shape. And this time pull it up. And I want to bring it up so that the bottom up here is just a little bit below that collar she has in there, a little choker in there. Same thing, hold the Control T keyboard shortcut and spin this a little bit like that, just a little bit of a spin. Just changes the angle a bit. I have it about 2.63 here on that angle. Choose OK. So it's right around in here somewhere. Looks pretty good. And then same trick as before. Grab the magic wand. Click in the bottom half of this section and select that open area. Make a new layer. There it is. And then fill that with white. Paint bucket and fill with white. And then we can go ahead and deselect. And we're now done with that paper layer. And that is the mask in here that we'll be using to create our torn paper effect. Okay, let's now bring in our top picture. That's our landscape. I have one right in here called Winter. I'll just use this one. Now let's drag this in like that. Measure comes into the top. There it is. Now this picture is just a hair smaller than the other picture, so grab the left hand side and pull it out just a little bit. And grab the bottom, pull that down just a little bit, hit that green check mark, and it then fits that page. Okay, now let's hide that layer and hide the portrait down here. We have just these two paper layers showing. Go back to your magic wand, and this time put a check where it says sample all layers, and then click inside that area. That selects that inner area right there. Now go up to your top layer here, and you can show this again. And then with that selected, hit the layer mask button. And what that does is it shows that middle part and hides the outsides. We want the opposite of that. So make sure that you're on that layer mask. Look for that light blue outline. Go up to filter come down to adjustments and invert and there we go we now have a hole in here in the shape of that torn paper cut we can now show the girl in the background 
And there we are. So we're getting pretty good already. There's our layer mask with that torn area. And now you can see the second use for having these kind of paper colored things up in here. Go up to your upper of these two layers, the white layers. And I'll just use the down arrow and bring this down a little bit and come to the one below and use the up arrow, bring that up a little bit so you can kind of see what we're working with right here. Okay, now let's go up to the top one and you see where that is. We can now kind of change or adjust this and make it more of a random effect. Use the Control T keyboard shortcut to select that. And we'll be using these options down here, Rotate, Scale, and Skew. Click on Skew first and then go up here to the top middle and you can pull this like that and kind of bend it over to the side. And it just puts in a, an interesting little distortion in there. Okay, let's go over here and click on Scale and then grab the middle side and pull it to the right a little bit. Pull the whole thing down a little bit. Just kind of doing something along those lines so it changes it so it doesn't match exactly. And then choose OK. Okay, the bottom one's a little bit more difficult because it has much deeper and higher troughs and valleys in here. But same basic idea, come down to that layer right here. Again, Control T keyboard shortcut brings up our options. Let's click on Skew, grab the top in here. I'm going to skew it to the left, I think, this time. Just like that. Click on Scale, grab the middle control on the right. It's kind of hard to see there, but it's in there. Pull that to the right a little bit. And let's position this up just a touch and over. And just find a nice spot like that where you have a bit of white showing, has some just variation in here. I'm going to make sure we're on scale still, pull this one down just a little bit and up. Just kind of flattens it out if I do that. There we go. And just play around with it to have a nice kind of a random edge in here. It can follow kind of along the lines of what we have in there, but don't have it too much, you know, too exact. And I think maybe right about here looks pretty nice. I like that. And the green check mark for OK. All right, so far so good. Now, let's add a paper effect on this kind of a paper texture. Let's go to our top one up here. And filter. Come down to filter gallery. And what I'm using here is in the texture section. It's right there. And it's the bottom right hand corner, texturizer. I'm using sandstone. And my settings are 200% for scaling and relief at 6 and the light is from the top left corner which is okay. It just puts in just a little bit of a texture in there. Come down to your lower white layer here. This time just go to filter and hit filter gallery. This just repeats your last filter gallery step and there we go. Okay now we need to come in and kind of mess up the edge a little bit in here. Make it look more like it's actually torn paper. Do the top one first. Make a layer mask there we go. Now on a layer mask, white shows. So white right now is on here, so everything is showing. Black hides. So make sure that your foreground color is black. That's correct. Let's go up to our brushes up here. And the brush you want to use, you'll be in defaults probably like that. Just click down here where it says default. Come down to artistic brushes. You want the second one here that says rough bristles. There it is. Now change the size to 250. And it should be about like that. You can kind of see it right there. There you go. Right over there. Maybe see it better over here. There we are. Looks like that. And we'll just be painting in here, just kind of tapping on the edge to roughen that edge up. Again, make sure you're on the top layer. Layer mask looks good. And then just tap just into the edge, just like that a little bit. So it's kind of like we're erasing just a little bit of that edge with some roughness. Now the reason I'm doing this on a layer mask instead of just erasing it is in case it gets messed up, I can take it out, just paint white over it, and then try it again. So the layer mask gives us a little bit of a safety net for this kind of a trick. I'm just tapping along and doing just a little bit of this effect, just right along the edge, and it looks more like it's actually torn paper when you do that. A little bit more right here. Okay, same exact thing on the next layer down. Using the bottom of this brush this time, make a layer mask. There we go. Make sure we're still on black. That's fine. There's our brush. You can still see it right there. Same exact thing. Just come in and tap with the bottom side of this brush. Just a few taps and it breaks up that edge and it looks more like it's torn paper. And just work along the whole thing. 
to have just a little bit of the stuff clear along. Don't try to be real even with this. A little bit of randomness actually looks better. You don't have to do every single spot. Some spots can be left as is. Some spots can have a bit more in there. It just roughens up that edge. Now the last thing we have left to do is just to give a little bit of a drop shadow in here. And for that, we're going to be making copies of these two layers. So select your layer, right click where the name is, choose duplicate layer and OK. There's the top one. Let's do the second one here for the bottom one. Right click, duplicate layer, choose OK. Now on the lower of the two, that's this one here and that one there. We do our top one first. We're going to invert this. Make sure you're on the image side. Look for that light blue outline. Go up to filter, come down to adjustments and invert. And that makes that black instead of white. Do the same thing down here. Filter adjustments, invert. There we go. Back to our top one. And I'll use my down cursor keys, the down arrow key. I'm just going to bring this down just a little bit like that. And there's our nice matching drop shadow. Now it's too dark. So change the opacity to 50% and hit the enter key. That sets that in. Let's now come down to the bottom one. Same trick. Use the up arrow key. And we'll raise this one up just a little bit. Looks pretty good right here. Maybe a little less. And again, change the opacity to 50%. Hit that enter key. And there we go. And that's all there is to it. There is our torn paper effect. Now if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And also check out my complete training for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, and I'll see you next time.